Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. The contrivances of human stupidity are almost boundless. We are caught in an age of atomism. Today's scientists are not scientists in the true Pythagorean or Platonic sense. What they are is mathematicians. And mathematicians, and I have nothing against math, it's a religion. Okay? It does not believe in anything that cannot be quantified and counted. But of course, since everything is fields and fields are not particles and they can't be quantified, one of the most amazing stupidities that makes me laugh endlessly anytime I either hear it or it pops into my head is a wave-particle duality. Let's actually talk about how simple the double slit experiment is here very quickly. And it is really simple. Everybody's like really confused. It's the same thing with the Schrodinger's cat. You know, is the cat really alive or dead? It's a stupid thought experiment. People actually crunch their brains on the sun. It's like, uh, you know, a mind bending question of like how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll pop. Um, wave particle duality. Well, let's, let's dissect that thing. Three parts. Duality doesn't exist in nature. Duality means an uh, inherent contradiction or an inherent duplicity within natura naturans or mother nature. It doesn't matter what you want to call it. The uh, Greeks refer to it as the uh, cosmos nuitos and the cosmos ethitos. You can call it natura naturans, mother nature. Okay? Call it pan. Of course, pantheism is an inherently corrupt and mentally deficient uh, pseudo philosophy. Um, there's no dualities in nature. There's no contradictions in nature. Nature does not have dualities. So let's move on to wave and the wave particle duality statement that scientists and feel that there's love to talk about wave particle dualities. That's their favorite thing. That and emptiness and quantum. They love to talk about quantum and wave particle <laughs> dualities. Uh, excuse me. I digress because they're so stupid. Um, waves. There's no such thing as a wave. And I've talked about this endlessly in countless videos. A wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. A wave is... This is actually called the fallacy of uh, reification. What we're doing is reifying something that doesn't exist. Kind of like Bigfoots or unicorns. I saw a big hairy creature in the woods. That's Bigfoot. Yeah, it might have been. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave is no different than a shadow or emptiness. These are concept reifications. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave is not a noun. It's not a principle. It is in the dictionary now, but I'm talking about pure, hardcore, Platinian metaphysics and absolute, hardcore Pythagorean logic. There's no such thing as a wave, okay? This is a wave. No, that's my hand moving. No, that's a wave. You know, here's the waving flames on the uh, computer screen. No. No, a wave is what something does. A wave is not a principle, it's not a subject, and it's not a noun as per hardcore metaphysics. There's no such thing as a wave, so a wave doesn't exist. Exactly the same thing as a shadow. A shadow is not a thing. A shadow doesn't exist. A shadow is a concept reification of the absence of light. That's what a shadow is by definition, but a shadow is not a thing itself. So we've eliminated out duality, we've eliminated out waves, and particle, wave-particle duality, well, light is a coaxial circuit, transverse electrical magnetic longitudinal pulse perturbations, rarefactions and compressions is a coaxial circuit. There are no particles in light. The actual rarefactions and compressions, kind of like appearing and disappearing beads on a necklace, is what is mistaken for a light particle. This is Das Lichtwort, as the idiot Albert Einstein says. So why would you call Albert Einstein an idiot? Well, actually, i got to point this out since other people have actually been upset when I've said this in prior videos. I, I'm not saying Albert Einstein's an idiot. Yes, you did. You just said it. No, what I'm doing is quoting Nikola Tesla, who himself called Albert Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot fool and idiot. If you think you're smarter than Nikola Tesla, then you yourself are a crackpot and an idiot. So there's no such thing as a wave-particle duality. Now let's get on to the double-slit experiment. Double slit experiment uh, can be easily destroyed in one simple video that hardly nobody's watched that I made. There's a few people of other, a uh, few other people out there that made this video as well. But I'll get to that here really quickly. Is that the double slit experiment assumes, and the double slit experiment is no different than the Schrodinger cat mental thought experiment. Is a misapprehension of anybody that thinks they understand anything about light. Light does not travel, and nothing emits light. There's a difference between emission, transmission, and perturbation. And that's a rate of induction. Of course, I'm not the first person to say that. Tesla said that. Eric Dollard proved that in his book, Lone Pine Writings, Volume 1 and Volume 2. It assumes in double slit experiment that uh, there are light particles. Of course, there are no particles. There's nothing actually traveling 
through those slits. It also assumes a double slit experiment. It's not really an experiment. It's just kind of like a mental midget thought experiment of, geez, over here we've observed it. We've got an observer effect. We see particles. Over here we see waves. Like, this is what the idiot Albert Einstein, once again, I'm quoting Tesla and calling Albert Einstein an idiot, said, ah, together to do, what is it, the exact quote from uh, the idiot Einstein? Ah, uh, the explaining lights, uh, to explain it via waves, it is not insufficient. We explain it with particles, it is insufficient. But if we say that it is a wave particle duality, you know, the waves and particles together explain it. No. It assumes that there's something moving from one side to the other, and that's not the case. It's the same thing as a person in the middle of a calm pond flapping their arms. A person in the middle of a calm pond flapping their arms is not emitting anything and he's not transmitting anything. He's causing a perturbation in the medium. And this is medium with a big M. You want to call it medium, uh, the ether, or uh, you want to call it uh, counter space or zero point energy. Mother Nature doesn't give a shit what stupid, idiot human beings call it. It is the medium. I don't care what you call it. Call it zero point, call it anything. Actually, the idiots of quantum, who of course could never explain EPR and instantaneous action at a distance, they've got their own word for the ether. But the ether is like the big evil word to uh, quantum physicists who are not physicists, and quantum is a BS term, and I've made a video about that. They call it quantum foam or quantum liquid. <laughs> the only thing they've done is renamed the ether quantum uh, fluid. You just do a Google search on quantum fluid. It's like, well, this is a, 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 a cover word to, uh, to talk about the ether without actually saying the big evil ether word. Um, wave particle duality also assumes a wave particle duality, and I just got done disproving that one. Also, too, there's a video that I made. It's called the Seagull Needle Experiment. You can actually uh, point a laser at a single thin needle, not the eye, which, of course, is a hole and two little bars, just the needle shaft. And uh, simply pointing it at that, well, you'll get the exact same constructive destructive interference patterns seen on the wall as you do from the double slit experiment. You don't need a double slit. You just need a single super thin bar. And you'll get the exact same results. And you end up with constructive destructive interference, which, by the way, is the same thing you see underneath the ferrule cell. Everywhere you see light is the magnetism in constructive manifestation. Everywhere you see the absence of light, including the big dark hole in the center, yeah, that's the destructive, that's where light vanishes in the black hole, if you will, the center of the point of increasing inertia and acceleration at the event horizon. We just use the word colloquially, the event horizon of the dielectric entry, say entry, say entry word, as I can't think of a better word, dielectric entry into counter space, or the plane of inertia, it doesn't matter what you want to call it. What happens is in the double slit experiment and the single needle experiment is you actually have a phase disparity of disruption in the perturbation of the homogeneity of the actual perturbation. In other words, you set up a phase disparity. When you set up a phase disparity, instead of everything being like this, you actually have a phase disparity where you have cancellation, both constructive and destructive. Either it's additive or it's deconstructive and it vanishes in counter space. It's the same thing with magnetism. What do you mean, magnetism? Of course, there's no such thing as magnetic acceleration or magnetic attraction. You either have constructive or destructive manifestations. You take two quote-unquote like poles together, you will have increase. You can't force them together, right? Constructive manifestation. Take two inverse polarities. This is actually dielectric acceleration, not magnetic attraction. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. I've explained this a thousand times. Nobody fully grasps it. Well, a few people do they actually will accelerate towards one another very, very fast. Everything in nature is very, very simple. It's that human beings are that, that stupid. So there's no emission or transmission, only a field perturbation. Same as on a ferrocell, cell, and I've got hundreds of videos on the ferrocell cell and the super cell. It's just constructive and destructive interference. Everything in Mother Nature is pressure mediation, force in motion, inertia and acceleration. Everything is capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity. The fundamental cosmic mechanics of light, of magnetism, which is all the same thing. If you think there's something different, then you're as stupid as a little pathetic child who thinks water is one thing, ice is another thing, and steam is another thing. No, it's all one and the same thing. It's the hydrous oxide molecule. Water! No, oh, i got water here, and ice here, and steam here. We need to unify these things. I love it how the fact that scientists are trying to come up with a grand unified theory of totality. Well, Mother Nature... 
are, they're already unified. It's the human beings are inventing these paradoxes and these quantum BS. Mother Nature can't work that way. I mean, this fundamentally molests and uh, destroys even the most basic concept of Occam's razor. If anything embraces the Occam, Occam's razor uh, paradigm, it is natura naturans, or what you would proverbially call Mother Nature. You know, it can't be convoluted like quantum. Well, we got quantum particles disappearing and multiverses here. It's Jesus Christ. The only person that would think of stuff like that is some sort of person that's smoking dope or, you know, shooting drugs. I mean, ridiculous. The mental farts of these intellectually deranged, uh, pathetic scumbags. This is exactly what Nikola Tesla said, meant when he said... Uh, there are the, what is it, what is it he said? Someone's going to, as I forget the exact quote, it says, you can uh, th uh, think deeply and yet be quite insane. I said, what's important is to think deeply and clearly. I forget his exact quote, but it's something like that. There's so many quotes ro roaming around my head. And of course, Nikola Tesla was talking about the scientists of his day, and of course, they've gotten much, much worse. They're atomists. They think Mother Nature is a crazy hooker. A crazy cross-eyed hooker on crack with a bag of magic bumping particles. Everything is just bumping particles. Nature doesn't work that way. There's only one fundamental particle in nature, and it's nothing other than an ultra-high energy uh, 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 EM, ultra-high energy version of EM. I explained that before in different videos. Uh, there's only one fundamental particle, and even that is light, or a super-high energy EM, if you will. Um, everything in the universe is fields, not particles. There's no, it's nothing emits light. Sure it does. No, it doesn't. Everything we call speed of light is actually a rate of induction. Light doesn't actually have a speed, it's a rate of induction. We know it slows down in glass and, glass and water and countless other things. The only way you could actually explain light speeding back up without breaking the law of conservation of energy and a thousand other things that are absolutely impossible is by understanding that, you know, there's a medium. And the, the perturbation of that medium is a manifestation, either as light or as magnetism, or EM, which is a hybrid of uh, dielectric, uh, dielectricity and magnetism. There's no such thing as gravity. Everything we call gravity is just nothing an incoherent, point non-specific dielectric acceleration. That's what magnetic attraction is, by the way. It is point source dielectric acceleration. The only disparity between magnetic attraction, so-called, and gravity is a difference in the nature of one being point source and the other one being non-point source, incoherent dielectric acceleration. Point source is multiplicative. It's infinitely more powerful. Same thing is true of magnet. Most people don't realize that before a magnet becomes a magnet, it's exactly the same thing quantitatively. The only thing that happens when it becomes a magnet is a change in its qualitative nature of being a point source a field bubble of uh, the conjugate nature of the entire universe, which is a magnetic toroid of force and motion and a dielectric hyperboloid of inertia and acceleration. This is the conjugate yin and yang of the entire universe, dielectric and the magnetic. One is a force and motion, the other one's inertia and acceleration. Centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. Ultimately, everything is irreducibly simple. It's that human beings are that intellectually unevolved yet that they simply don't understand how simple it is. Because even a lot of the stupid, brain-dead, pathetic idiots of quantum have said outright, you know, this shit's got to be a lot more simple than we think it is. It is, but they just don't have the mental acuity to grasp how much more simple it is or how it works. They keep thinking in terms of bumping particles. If you have a mindset of trying to explain Mother Nature like she's a crazy hooker on crack with a bag of bumping particles, you're never going to figure this shit out. Never. And that's exactly what they're doing. That's the only thing they're on. A single set of railroad tracks going down the, the tracks. That's all they think. that We've got to be able to explain this. way. you got to explain Mother Nature in terms of bumping particles. Well, you've got to erase that shit off your brain, you know, you can't keep thinking the same way and coming up with different answers or coming up with any answers because nature doesn't work that way. You know, quantum is BS and uh, nature does not work via particles. It works off of fields and pressures of those fields. That is simplicity. That is Occam's razor. That is natura naturans. I hope you like this video. If you do, make a small donation because I don't sell anything. Or you can tell me to jump off a cliff, or you can send me an email telling me, how, telling me how much you think I suck, or how much you hate me. 
Anything that makes you happy, right? Because life is short and do whatever tickles your pickle. Aloha, uvidim se, do svidanya, and bye. Do 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 do